Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I come to you from the comfort of my bedroom to discuss with you a recent update or change that YouTube is bringing to the platform. Now, as I'm sure most of you are aware by now, later in February, YouTube will be switching their partnership program so that uh, only users with over 1,000 subscribers and over 4,000 hours of watched video over the past year, 12 months, will be able to stay in the partnership program. And what this entails is such things as being able to choose and upload video stills, uh, being able to make a profit and monetize any one of your videos. Um, and many people complain that, uh, or at least big time YouTubers often comment that, oh, it's only a couple dollars, and this, in the, in the long run, it'll be a good thing. Though in my case, I really don't see how, as I've already been in the partnership program for two years, and am not being grandfathered into this new program, but I'm rather being kicked out. Can you see how that might be just a little bit unfair? But this is more of a, uh, a plea to all of my Krona876 subscribers to subscribe to my main channel. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I've actually changed the name of this channel to Equilibrium Television as a way of making the audience more aware of my uh, video network that I'm making now. Uh, Krona876 is part of uh, is part of a time when I was on the site when I was making different content and I've evolved as a creator over the years. Um, and so now I make different kinds of videos and make podcasts on current events, politics, video games, you name it, we talk about it. I make review videos regarding movies, shows, anime, books in the future, and I plan on making a documentary series. In general, my creative efforts go into this channel uh, and will continue to go into this channel as I go down my uh, YouTube career. Now, this update will not stop me from making content. I've seen a lot of YouTubers on Twitter talk about how this is a death blow to the amount of time and effort that they put into their YouTube uh, careers, basically, and that most of them are just going to shrug and give up. And that is exactly what YouTube wants, which is why, which is one of the reasons why I'm not going to do that. But another reason that I'm not going to do that is because I have been on this site since 2008. That is 10 years now in June. And if for one second YouTube thinks that I'm going to leave the platform, they have another thing coming. Uh, I've already, long ago, I've passed the point where putting my time in has not equaled the amount of money that I've gotten out of it. I simply enjoy creating for creating's worth. Uh, and I think YouTube probably realizes this. Um, but still, regardless, this hurts all small-time YouTubers. It's basically a shotgun strategy to addressing issues such as Logan Paul uh, and the occasional Al-Qaeda video that might be advertising Kraft macaroni and cheese, let's say. So what's the takeaway? Here's the takeaway. If my main channel had the same amount of subscribers and video views that this current channel has, I wouldn't be worried. Uh, this is a pretty medium-sized channel. Um, despite the fact that I don't really upload to it anymore, it still pulls in views because the things I uh, uploaded about are still popular. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Helsing, and a few other minor things. Um, that being said, if even half of you went over to my main channel and took the time to subscribe and give my content a, uh, a chance, I would be very appreciative because if I could reach a thousand subscribers by February 20th, um, that would be awesome. Uh, as far as video time watched, I do just about reach the threshold. I need about 500 more minutes. That is my message to all you, is that if even a fraction of you went over and subscribed to that channel and gave it some support in this last month here, it would help me out tremendously um, as a content creator. And it would keep me basically afloat. Um, and this isn't even what my main source of income or really uh, my main career. As you can probably tell, uh, I live kind of a busy life. I, I'm eating my freaking dinner right now. I go to college. I, uh, I plan on going into, I plan on getting further education when I graduate from this institution. And 
This is more just a side thing for me. That being said, I do feel like I would need some sort of an audience to continue to do this with any kind of motivation. Also, as a content creator, I value your input. So if you go over to my main channel, check it out, um, see something you like, go ahead and comment. Uh, I, I would love for people to guide me in the direction in which, where in which that channel should go. Um, I have a few ideas about where it's going to be going just based on my own interests, but I also like to accommodate to the audience. Really, I've been saying this for a long time now, but YouTube took the slogan, Broadcast Yourself, out of their title five or six years ago. From that point on, and I would even argue before that point, um, they've been pushing to push the little man out of YouTube and bring the big man in. Um, make it more like TV 2.0, which is going to be a very difficult thing, seeing as though YouTube is built on you, the creator, and the viewer. Um, very different medium than TV. TV is one way, unless you're watching American Idol and you vote, you text your favorite singer to their number, but it's mostly run through them. Uh, YouTube is a different story, and as uh, users such as Philip DeFranco have pointed out, uh, YouTubers depend extraordinarily on their audiences through Patreon. Uh, he mentioned a couple websites that were very beneficial to um, helping users or helping uh, helping viewers directly support their content creators. Um, so I would urge you to go check out those links, which I will post in the description section of this video. Now, I watched three YouTubers' interpretations of this event. PewDiePie, The Amazing Atheist, and Philip DeFranco. <clears throat> PewDiePie's general takeaway, which I don't really agree with, was that this wasn't that big of a deal, and he kind of agreed with Keemstar in saying that small-time YouTubers should just give up. And I, and I would like to say to that, uh, no, not going to do that. Uh, Something that the Amazing Atheist pointed out after I watched PewDiePie's video, which kind of made sense to me, was that collectively, all of these small channels probably do take a decent chunk of the larger channel's audience away. Um, smaller channels are great for creating niche communities that um, that are un that understand what they like and can reach out to one another and essentially create strong communities uh, in which a greater sense of belonging and meaning and all that jazz is achieved which is really what made this site great to begin with and why when they went away from the personalized channel designs with comments and everything like that something was really lost on the website mainly that content creators and users could reach out to one another easily and create networks and groups and things like that uh, but YouTube went away from that direction and now is trying to head more in a uh, like I said TV 2.0 direction which really doesn't mesh with the original design of their website which of course as you all know was built on broadcasting yourself never forget that slogan with the loss of these niche communities comes a reduced ability of for YouTube really to create interesting unique content uh, which you really can't see anywhere else in the world um, and that's what made it so great and now it seems to be kind of losing that in favor of the big wig channel uh, that just broadcasts generally what is given the stamp of approval by the Google, uh, you know, executive board or whatever. Now my concern isn't necessarily with this, uh, you know, theoretical executive board or the 10,000 employees that YouTube will be hiring to review videos. Um, it's more or less how these employees will go about judging the criteria of these videos. Now as if you're if if anyone in my audience is aware of the case uh, with Google versus James Damore, uh, you will know that Google is an SJW safe haven for all its employees and fringes on Antifa uh, in a lot of cases. All you have to do is listen to the court case um, and I'll link that in the description section below as well. Um, but seeing this as evidence to how Google handles its employees, I would hate to see how it handles its content creators. In a free marketplace of ideas, uh, YouTube and Google have proven anything but capable in managing their platform. My sentiment on the future of this website is pretty poor at this point because I feel like if I, as a United States citizen, have a political opinion about something, uh, that is slightly controversial it will be demonetized or even possibly removed from the website from these employees 
um, just because it doesn't fall in line with what they want it to say or they don't agree with it or whatever. It's very dangerous, folks. If any viable uh, alternative to YouTube pops up, it's hard to say that the content creators will be able to resurface themselves on that website because guess how people find things on the internet? Google! That's right, they got the monopoly. So if you want to find things online, guess what videos are going to pop up first? YouTube. Now unfortunately, the only way that, that YouTube loses any kind of sway is for all of the content creators to pack up all their content, take it off the website, and go somewhere else and upload it. Because people love the content. They're not necessarily attached to YouTube. They love their videos. They love the people that they follow. Um, and that's really the power of the internet, is connecting people. And YouTube seems to be doing everything in its power to destroy um, the reason that the website became popular in the first place. So YouTube has basically made it impossible for people to start from scratch. Now that being said, uh, the method that I just mentioned would be nearly impossible to do. YouTube has staying power at this point. YouTube has basically made it impossible for people to start from scratch, which is a kick in the face to, to everyone collectively. And unfortunately, like I said, they hold a monopoly. Now I'd like to comment on Philip DeFranco's solution to this problem. His solution only works for YouTubers who already have a face on the website. It doesn't do anything for YouTubers who have not even come into their own yet. And that's really who this update hurts the most. Even if you go download the browser that automatically allocates money to your, the people that you watch, um, how are you going to find people to watch in the future? All of these YouTubers who have made it big and got through the business um, through a much more lenient system that allowed for freer speech. And it's easy to sit back and say all this now because they're sitting on their ivory towers. The only reason that I even have this ability is because I've gotten to where I'm at at this point and I have all these years of experience. Now, hopefully YouTube management changes in the future, but it's very doubtful that that will happen. Now, I know most of you are here for the AMVs, uh, but I would greatly appreciate it if you gave my other content a shot. Um, thank you for being a subscriber all these years. I appreciate it. Um, and that being said, I hope to see you soon. Ciao.